I have never seen you so reverent, dear child. Is there something you wish to confess? No. It just felt wonderful to pray. Come. I have never seen such piety. This is the Battle of Agincourt. One of the darkest days in our history. Why does God make the French suffer? Come. Sit down. We suffer at the hands of man, not God. Our queen another land has disowned her son and given her daughter in marriage to the English king. Our queen is the woman in the legend, the one who will destroy France. This is France. We are here. This area is occupied by the English invaders. This is Burgundy. The French will make packs with the English. So all this fighting is to determine who is the rightful ruler of France. Refugees, I think they're from another village. We need food. Shelter. The soldiers have burnt everything. We have barely enough for ourselves. Go on. Please! There are the children! We have nothing to spare. Move on! Go! I want you to sit next to your father. 
My daughter will make an excellent wife. What a bountiful meal. Yes. Enough for everyone with plenty to spare. Praise God there is enough. Though there's never plenty to spare. Not even one crust of bread for a hungry child? Not if the child is part of a mob. One small mercy would crack the dam, and in no time we would be flooded. They could have been us, Papa. And they would turn us away as they must. This is how it is. Your daughter is very outspoken. <laughs> She's young. She'll outgrow it. I will never outgrow simple decency. It's people like you who do nothing to stop the miseries of the world. Joan. Do you remember six years ago when you saw me kneeling in this spot and you spoke to me? As if it were yesterday. You thought it was sudden piety. It wasn't. I had heard a voice as clearly as I'm speaking to you now. It was St. Catherine. And her voice was beautiful, sweet, soft. And she told me she was chosen to guide and counsel me. And that I must listen to what she was telling me because it was at the command of God. I didn't tell you before because I was afraid. What have your voices said to you? At first, they just told me that I must be a good child and go often to church. But now they're more insistent. And they tell me that I must prepare to leave and that my destiny lies elsewhere. And what do they say is your destiny? They don't say. But they make me understand that our people have lost a sense of hope. Too willingly giving up their freedom. And that I meant to leave and... Burgundians. Take heed, people of Doremi! Take heed, people of Doremi! Burgundian soldiers approach! Father, ring the bells, ring the warning bells. Yes. They will attack by morning. Take heed! Ride the Vocalure. Uh -huh. Alert Sir Robert. Go! Go, go! What about the water? Have you seen him yet? I thought he was with you. You wait here and search the ruins. I'm going back to the village. No, you mustn't. It's my best and only friend.
He was your best child! Why? Ah. What did he do wrong? on this. The Dauphin Charles needs me, and I must go to him in Chino. Go to him? How? I don't know, Father. I don't know. I, uh... Gather we're a bit late. Yes, Sir Robert. Just late enough to avoid any danger. Jean, be so kind as to take that livestock to the king in Chinon. Get down from there. They're going to Charles' father. Some looking for a camp following strumpet. Is that what you're wanting, girl? To to be the plaything of soldiers? <laughs> because you arrived in the ideal spot. <laughs> please, sire. I offer no trouble, and I wish none in return. Now, nah, please just continue with the animals to Shino. Well, these animals are going nowhere except to the butchers inside Sir Robert's castle. Sir Robert said the livestock was going to the Dauphin in Chinon. Well, if one man's pampered stomach gets more bloated than the other, what concern is it to you? Bertrand, unload the livestock. I can see by your clothing, sire, that you're a man of substance. I implore you then to understand that I must go to Chinon to see the Dauphin, because he needs me needs you. I have a mission that's getting clearer by the hour. 
You have a mission. You must help the Dauphin claim his crown and unite the people of France. <laughs> Then I must take you to meet Sir Robert. And you shall make your case to him. Come. Thank you, sir. Come. Sir Robert, I present to you the Maid of Lorraine. I um, <clears throat> understand that you're on your way to Chinon to crown the king and to unite the poor wretches of France. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Robert, someone must help the king claim his crown. And, and what makes you think, you poor simple girl, that you would succeed when the king's loftiest advisers have failed? Because I must. Just as you, Sir Robert, must send me there. Sir Robert, the Dauphin holds the future of France. Why do you call him Dauphin? Crowned or not, Charles is our king by right of blood. And if this inactive mongrel is ever going to be a king, we have to start calling him king. Don't you think? I think he has to believe he is king. He has to earn it. Uh, Jean? Hmm? Send her back to her father for a sound beating. Yes, sir. Please, Sir Robert. I said go! I suggest you go home, unless you want to see the Burgundians destroy this place, too. I thought bigger towns would contain bigger minds. I was wrong. So you slept here all night and now you're hungry, hmm? Hmm? Yes. You look strong enough to work. Come with me. Child, she won't eat much. You can wait. That one couldn't stop crying for two days and nights. Maybe he just lost interest in crying. People today stopped fighting for soup. No. You have a gift. Mm. Mother Babette? Why have the people of Vaucouleur given up hope? Why don't they just seek help in another village? From where, child? Every city, village, town. It's each man for himself. an idea. To the good French people of every town and village who need shelter or fear attack. Uh, I can't write as fast as you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> to help us build defenses against those who would destroy us. What's your name, boy? 
Noel, sir. Noel? Whose name is on this declaration? None, sir. To the good French people of every town and village who need shelter or fear attack, come and be protected within the walls of Vaucalour and help us build defenses against those who would destroy us by dictate of the Maid of Lorraine. A dictate of a fairy tale. She is no fairy tale. She's flesh and blood, a maid from this very region. Sir Robert. Not since you turned that peasant girl away. Well, she, she, she stole my hens, the thief? The hens are here, but they refuse to lay. Not one egg from the lot of them. Oh, sorry. Even my chickens turned against me, huh? What the devil have they done to my city? It's the girl, sir. People have come from everywhere to defend us. They say she's the maid of Lorraine. Bring her to me. <laughs> you, 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 you look like a, you look like a man, and you look like you're dressed to go somewhere. But I'm ready to travel to Shino. And today's the day you will send me. You're cracked to think that I would send you to Shino to see the king. A few days ago, you sent me away from here. But now today, here I am again, your invited guest. And Vokuler is ready to defend itself. It's nothing that couldn't have been done before. Why, why are you just standing there? I need to write. I am writing that I believe that you may be the maid of Lorraine. Sir Robert, please. I'm not the maid of Lorraine. Do you want to go or not? Do you want to go? Yes. I know how to tickle a regal brain. What you do when you get there is up to you. Jean? Sir, you were so kind as to deliver this young maid to me. Therefore, you shall deliver her to Charles. gateway to what's left of our country. See the smoke from the villages? Someone's burning their way there. Once they've taken Orléans, they'll finally be able to cross the River Loire. France's doom will be sealed. And we have no time to lose. I've always wanted to visit the Loire Valley. Not one of my better ideas. I think we should turn back. There's two ways to Chinon, across or around. We have to take the most direct route to Chinon. This is my convoy and my responsibility to get us to Shino, alive. We're gonna camp here for the night and then in the morning we'll take the route around. Sorry. She's gonna get us killed.
is not the work of the Burgundians. It's the Black Knights. Filthy English. The Church of St. Catherine. St. Catherine is my patron saint. She speaks to me. I thought England was cold, but your precious Burgundy can chill the bone as deep as the foulest winds of Scotland. Mm. Therein lies the problem with you invaders. <laughs> Never satisfied. Why this urgent visit? You diverted troops from my siege at Orléans to chase after a girl. Not just a girl. The Maid of Lorraine. Don't embarrass yourself, Philip. The Maid of Lorraine is a fairy tale. A bedtime story for children. And simpletons. This girl has thwarted my siege at Vaucouleurs. Now she marches on Chinon. She must not get to Charles, whatever it takes. I thought we were superstitious. You French are worse. Never underestimate the power of a myth, my friend. We must find the maid and kill her. <laughs> Oh, 
Get down! Search the wagon! Well now, are you the maid? Is your peasant daughter still a maid? <laughs> Take her away! Leave her! Leave her! No! Peasant dog! Take him across the river. I'll distract him. Go! What are you... Jump! Jump! Deliver this message to no one but the Dauphin. Poor Louis. He has no anger for Raymond. From Sir Robert de Baudricourt, with salutations and fealty to His Majesty Charles VII. Well, well. The Baudricourt has sent us the Maid of Lorraine. Not precisely from Lorraine, but close enough to keep her in the hunt. I've tried the Maid of Lorraine ploy before. I've even recruited a few candidates myself. But it's never worked. You will, of course, not receive the latest candidate. And why not? The church has little tolerance for self-proclaimed icons. Yes, but it's the Baudricourt who makes the claim. The girl's position on the matter is quite unknown to you, dear Bishop. Perhaps I will see her. As His Majesty's church-appointed spiritual advisor, I advise His Majesty not to take lightly the advice of his church-appointed spiritual advisor. And as His Majesty's military advisor, I have always opposed the Maid of Lorraine tactic. Toying with people's fantasies is a tricky business. But what if this one's credible? The Bodricor endorses her, and he's no fool. If she wears the part well, the people might rally. The troops might rally. Even I might rally. We could finally budge from this giant chamber pot and go where we belong. Raz. She did come all this way. Uh, no sense being rude. <laughs> Thank you. 
The esteemed Sir Robert de Baudricourt has sent us a girl he claims to be the maid of Lorraine on a mission from God. <laughs> but our eminent bishop rightfully insists upon proof. So, we will put her to the test in front of the entire court. Yes. Yes, you, La Trimoile, will be seated on the throne, and I shall be mingling with the assemblage. If she ferrets the true king, she will have proven herself divinely inspired. His Majesty's, how shall I put it, boyish demeanor is legend. She'll spot you at once. And then? And then... Won't it be fun? <laughs> Bishop, don't be so dreary. If nothing else, the crowd will find it miraculous. It will reinforce their faith in God. And what's wrong with that? There may be no harm in seeing the girl. What is your name, child? I am John Dark of Dormammy, Your Worship. May I speak to the Dauphin? Hmm. Alone? <laughs> Shall I bid the others go? Or shut when you leave, eh, Bishop? Madofa. I've been sent by God to tell you that you must claim your crown and unite the people of France. And why do you imagine God has chosen you for this holy mission? I don't know. But I do understand why he's been so insistent. The English have begun a siege at Orléans. If the siege falls, you will never get to Reims, and you will never be the king. Do you presume to think that this is news to me? Then why 
Why haven't you sent your army to raise the siege? I can't. I haven't the money or the means. Besides, no one believes in France anymore. They're tired of fighting. You must have faith, my Dauphin, and the people of France will follow. Why do you claim to be the maid of Lorraine? I'm not the maid of Lorraine, my Dauphin. No. Of course you're not the maid, but people say you are. Why? Because they need someone to believe in. Why do you call the king Dauphin? That is the title given to the rightful heir of the throne. Clever. God wants you to be king, my Dauphin. I always thought I would be a good king. Lift the siege at Orléans and go and triumph to Reims. Actually, there might be one way. The army they would never follow the Dauphin, but they would follow the maid of Lorraine. But I'm not the maid. You'll have to learn to stop saying that. I don't know how to lead an army. You'll have to learn that, too. You'll be surrounded by knights and commanders. You won't have to do much. Just, just be the maid. God did not send me for this. How do you know? Couldn't this be God's plan? You were sent here to convince me to claim my crown. I'm convinced, but Orléans stands in the way. I can't rally an army to lift the siege, but the maid of Lorraine can. God would not want me to live such a lie. But is it a lie? If God has sent you to lead the French army to victory, then might that stand to reason that you are the maid? Or were you not really sent by God? I was sent by God, my Dauphin, I assure you. I'll need proof. Can you give me a sign? In hours, what can they possibly be talking about? She's the one. She's the one we've been waiting for. God has sent her to lead my army. A rather impulsive statement, Your Majesty. She showed me a sign. A sign from God. What sign? I'm sworn to silence. Surely a man as devout as you wouldn't expect me to break a vow to God. If only we could be certain of her purity. The church is the best arbiter of such things. We can send her to the convent of Poitiers to be examined. Precisely. Poitiers is a perilous journey. Which is why you will accompany her with an armed escort, dear friend. continues. And so does mine. I do not know away from B. What do your voices tell you? That it is God's will to deliver the people of if France. If it be God's will, then there is no need for soldiers. The soldiers will fight, and God will give them a great victory. We find nothing heretical. Her claims to divine guidance. We find in her only ardent faith, honesty, and her none has a right to reject this maid. The Where are all these people? The men that responded to the king's call for troops. Follow the maid of Lorraine. Raise your arms, John. Raise them high.
Is that her? Is that the maid? You damn nobles are all alike. You never bring me in until it's too late. I gotta double my fee. You'll have a fine chance for riches, considering your arch enemy has taken Le Touraine. Sir William Glasdale. Capture him and he'll fetch a great price. If I meet up with Glasdale, I promise you, you can sell him off in pieces. <clears throat> wow. Well. She certainly looks the part, <clears throat> if there is a she under all that. And what part are you, sir? This is Captain Lahir. I've engaged him to lead the mission to Orléans. To lead? Don't worry. You'll be out front for all the cheering. But around here, grown men come in. So if you'll excuse us, my dear, the captain and I have work to do. I'm leaving tomorrow. Leaving? You won't be with us in Orléans? Him? He's a military advisor. He sends other people off to die. <laughs> Shouldn't you be in bed, child? No oh, one must know what's being planned for myself and the men who've come to you fight. You may stay, or you may go, but be quiet. The captain needs to concentrate, my dear. We know the English have taken Le Tourelle. They've practically closed the circle around Orléans, but this news is three days late. It takes about four days to get there. We have 12,000 men, half of them useless. That leaves us with Pardon the force. Me. I've made this journey. We can't get there in four days with all the livestock for the troops and the people of Orléans. We only take enough livestock to feed the troops. Our objective is to raise the siege, not to feed the masses. Well, how long will it take? A week to travel, another to prepare, and then how long to win? If we don't feed them, they will die. My dear, you are neither a commander nor a soldier. All you have to do is play the maid and try not to get yourself killed. I'm not pretending, sir. I'm here by the will of God with the authority of the king and the blessings of the church. And I say that the people of Orléans must be fed. Circle's almost closed. We better hurry. Yes. We need to attack now. The southwest gate is still free. We can get the food inside. Under a hail of arrows from English archers. They won't attack. Look at those campfires. The English have grown lazy. They're not prepared to fight. If we go inside peacefully, there's not even a chance that they can react. Then we can make our plans from inside Orléans. All right. But half the army will stay behind to cover our tracks. Demets. Keep the men ready to charge in case we get in trouble. If we get inside, if we get inside, stay here. Wait for the signal to attack. Sir. Jean won't be going with us? Open the south gate. Glasdale and men at arms who 
around the city of Orléans. You have no right to be in this kingdom of France. The King of Heaven sends you warning through me, Joan the Maid. If you obey, I shall grant you mercy. If you refuse, I shall raise a war cry against you that will be remembered forever. <laughs> if you refuse, I shall raise a war cry against you that will be remembered forever. I shall not write further. And who do you think you're going to send to deliver this? Hmm? Not one of my men. Maybe one of God's angels will take it for you. <laughs> they are, after all, already in heaven. I'll take it. For Raymond. Should have heard from them by now. We need to attack as quickly as possible. No, we must give the English a chance to leave peacefully. Leave? Peacefully? Look at them. With each passing moment, they become more organized, more prepared to fight. We still have an advantage. 5,000 men on the south bank of the Loire. We must strike now. If there's even a chance of winning without shedding blood, then we have to try it, Captain. Listen to me. I was at Agincourt. I've seen the English at their best. Four thousand strong. Glory of France. Our men and horses and heavy armor, banners held high. We rode to meet the English invaders. But it had rained all night. On the field of battle was muddy. They slaughtered us like pigs even after we had surrendered. John, John. Peter, Peter! What's happening? We're preparing for battle. Captain Lahir's orders. Where is he? He's with her, Count Dunois. Agreement, Captain. Explain it to them. There's the answer to your letter. They're sending for reinforcements. We attack. Headed to lead us to our deaths. He survived many battles. He must know what he's doing. Has he ever fought a battle for God? 
Who knows how God chooses his soldiers? Look at us. Hmm? Dominus Pobisco. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. must not reach the wall. The flame must strike here. I can do that. As soon as we set fire, we must find Louis or he'll suffocate. Yes, sir. These men are willing to die for you. Perhaps you should say something to them. otherwise.
Can't I hear our men fight? Our men have pulled back. Let's oh. take off our armor. the trip. You'll bleed to death. Break it off. Joan, what can't... Do it. I down on this. Once we get inside, we have to find Louis. I am the maid.
You die where you stand! Very digno et justum est, equum et salutare, nos tibi semper. Ubique gratias, geri, domini sancti, pater omnipotens, eterni deus. Vergesum Christum Dominum nostrum.
come from all over France for this great occasion. You can't imagine how far some people have come. Jer! Oh. Let me see you. You must be feeling better. Was it all the excitement? God, it was exciting. How's Mama? Papa? They're doing well. Everybody looks up to them now. Strangers pass through just to see the house where you once lived. Let's think of something for you to bring home to Mama. I won't be going home. I didn't have the courage to tell them, but I want to join the army and fight beside you. No, Pierre. But why? No. I'll make a great soldier. I will. I'll prove to. It has nothing to do with that. I mean, you probably want to fight because you think that it means something. You think that what I did was glorious. That's just what they want you to think. The ones who used me, I let them. What are you saying? Because of you, we finally have a king, and France is no longer a dream. I've heard people call themselves Frenchmen. Not what town, not what region, but their country. And you did that. We all think you did it for us. Are we wrong? Well, you're right. And always for the people. Just needed you to tell me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pierre's going to be the best soldier in all of France. So you don't look like someone on the way to her banquet. Because I'm not. Well, the king was quite insistent. Your presence is important. Peacocks flocking their latest feathers. I have no reason to attend. I suppose I gave you a reason. What? Charles has made a treaty with Philip, giving him the district of Champagne. Isn't Don Remy right on that border? Settle a question. When Saint Catherine and Saint Margaret come to you, do they have arms and legs, or do they float above the ground? They are as complete in body as they are in spirit. <clears throat> Your Majesty, what would you call a baker who slices his cake while it's still in the oven? I would call him not a baker. <laughs> what would you call a king who slices up his kingdom while others are fighting to unite it for him? Your Majesty, why would France sign a treaty with Burgundy? I fought to unite all of France. Not to make packs with its bits and pieces. Burgundy has promised us Paris, our beloved capital. And they have agreed to a one month cessation of conflict. Yes, but Philip will use the time to fortify Paris, not to retreat from it. 
You overstep yourself. It is not your place to question the king's authority. It is God's will that France is united. Not even the king has the right to challenge God's authority. I would strongly counsel this girl or any unenlightened mortal against stating what is or is not God's will. And what if God speaks for himself? Oh. Your voices, yes. Answer me, child. How are we to rely on them? You can trust experience. <laughs> Captain Lahir, has my counsel ever been wrong? No, my friend. Not yet. But perhaps you count too much on your voices. Good soldiering was as responsible for your successes as any prayers. And I worry one day you will call God's name and charge, and there will be no one there to watch your back. Your Majesty, let me march on Paris with my brave army of Frenchmen and defend what is rightfully ours. You presume to order the king? Not order. Entreat in the name of God. You presume to speak for God? Not for him, from him. You are perilously close to heresy. When did truth become heresy? All heretics believe they speak the truth. Does that include bishops? You ask for eternal damnation! Well, if she's a heretic, what does that make me? <laughs> It must be made clear to all here present that I would never knowingly break a lawful agreement. No matter how grateful I and all of France are to you, no matter how magnificent it would be to have a truly united country. But we are deeply touched by the loyalty that beats in the heart of this a virtuous subject. What's she going to do? She's going to do Paris. What? She's going to do anyway. having missed the spirited conversation between yourself 
And our dear young maid. More spirited in the telling, no doubt, than in the actuality. No doubt. I've been giving much thought to the pastoral needs of our brethren in the north. The district of Compiègne in spiritually deficient Burgundy is further deprived by its lack of a bishop. Now, it strikes me that they could benefit from the moral authority of a prelate not unlike yourself. I'm honored by the Archbishop's endorsement, but I am quite content with my appointment to the King's Court. I was not, in fact, soliciting your opinion on the matter. I'm transferring you to Beauvais in the district of Compiègne. You will henceforth be their bishop. I'm being sent into exile. My words against the maid have embarrassed the church that sanctioned her. But the church needs your services in the north, my dear Kosho. In this wicked game, I have but one card left to play. I must make it count. She's asked for leave to visit her family. You've given her no reply. I have no reply. Until we've cleaned up her mess, Joan is to stay at court. I may still need her. Adversaries, I've come to apologize. We promised you peace, and, well, it has not quite gone as we'd hoped. Yes. Quite. Let us address the treaty you broke when you sent the maid to attack Paris. I was as shocked as you. She's a headstrong girl, this Joan. And so immensely popular. Where is this leading? Get to the point. The point, sir is that I have come to propose a 30-day cessation of conflict among our three factions. This time, no exceptions. And what, may one ask, would be the benefit for Burgundy? And England? In your territories are cities still loyal to me. 
If there is a treaty, I would not be able to defend them, would I? There would be nothing to stop you from taking them. You're very kind. But what's to prevent our taking them anyway? What them? Then I promise that you have not yet seen the full power of the maid. Your Majesty, the cities you have just condemned will send appeals for your help. And when I ignore them, they will turn to the maid. Tell Joan she may leave court to visit her family. And when she returns, we would like to confer a very special honor. Godspeed, dear Bishop. You are the most cunning man I have ever known, perhaps the most ruthless. You have betrayed me for Joan, and you will betray her as well once she has outlived her use. <laughs> oh, you speak nonsense, old friend. Joan is the maid. Do you forget? She is going to unite all of France behind me. Poor deluded Joan, she has no idea she has put a monster on the throne. Those are my last words as your majesty's spiritual advisor. Can I help Mama? Oh, no, sit. If you're a guest, what if I don't wish to be a guest? Left this outside. I fed your horse. Beautiful animal. It's a simple meal, but it's hearty. Isabel. Stop making apologies for the way we live. Is the King's Court as beautiful as they say? Well, nothing is as beautiful as home. <laughs> that you had said that to Pierre? Pierre made his own choices, Papa. He followed a dream. Yours. You still call me a dreamer after all? After all you have done? What have you done? Beyond making yourself into an idol. I've pledged my life to unite France. And sacrificed your brother in the bargain. Don't say that. He was my son. What do you want from me? Please return to me, dear patron saint. Please give me guidance and show me the way to my destiny. I would have expected Beauvais to have a grander cathedral. 
God resides here, nevertheless, with room enough for visitors, even the English regent. And my personal chaplain. We have a religious question that you might settle. I need to apprehend and eliminate a certain villainous girl, but she must be destroyed in name as well as body. I have heard that you may regard this self-same girl as a heretic. So I find myself wondering, might the church be helpful in this matter? Church does not kill. <laughs> the Inquisition is burning heretics by the bushel. The Inquisition merely locates dead branches on the tree of Mother Church and then brings in civil authorities to do the pruning. Meaning you would agree to try her? Were she to be captured in my diocese, my duty would be to fight for the salvation of her immortal soul. I would expect nothing more or less. You are leaving because I denied you forgiveness. No, Papa. I'm leaving because I have a calling. Because this is what God meant for me to do. Because this is what I'm compelled to do. Miss Pierre did what he was compelled to do. Papa. I'm afraid to leave. Even more than I was before. You will bravely face whatever life hands you. How could you not? You are a daughter of Jacques d'Arc. You've changed. My counsel has told me that my work is not yet finished. They return to you? Yes. They told me that Charles will betray me. And that he must do this so that he can fully be king. My darkest time lies ahead. It's all a part of God's plan. And everything will be fine in the end. I uh, encountered a messenger with a letter for you from the citizens of Compagnie. Can you read it? Yes. To blessed Joan the Maid from the citizens of Copenhagen, hear our cry. Philip has invaded, his troops are upon us. We have written many pleas to the king without reply. Save us, dear maid, from the wrath of the Burgundians in the name of God. Huh. So it begins. Your Majesty, why do you ignore the plight of your loyal subjects in Compiègne? It was not a choice. I was forced to sign a treaty after our little misadventure in Paris. And even if I were to choose to violate it, I, I haven't the resources. Our troops are all fighting up north. Our finances are depleted. Our cities are overrun with refugees and plague. I've discovered that getting the crown is one matter, but keeping it, 
quite another. I'm still commander of your army. Why don't you send me to liberate them? Yes. Yes, I must do right by all my subjects, whatever the risk. Their king is very compassionate. How quickly can you leave? As soon as an army can be assembled. I'm afraid all I can spare is a small army of 200. But I will send for Captain Lahir to bring a larger army from the north. You can rendezvous at Compiègne. It will be good to fight again with the right men, with the right reasons. Well then. Your Majesty. Joan. You don't have to do this. The day we met, we spoke of God's plan, and we still have to play our parts. Whatever you do, you do by the will of God. Know that I know that. John? I have a map of Copiang here. Jean, you have to listen to me. You may not have the chance to speak again. If I'm captured or killed, you must not risk yourself or the lives of our men to save me. I know that this is hard for you to understand, but you must stand behind Charles. Promise me that you'll finish what we started. I swear it. The here! The here approaches! that you intend to sell me to the English. Rumors in a place like this are like water, not to be trusted. I'd rather die than be an English hand. What will it take to make you eat? I will eat if you send a message to the king telling him of my situation. So that he may shed a tear. So that he will do what God expects of him next. And what may that be? Why don't you send the message and find out? Impudent little witch. Enough! I was wintering in the south when I heard of this. I returned as quickly as possible. No, you'll catch a chill. You have duped my son into your dreadful game. This 
girl is not a threat. There will be no sail to England. Come with me. Did you sleep well? Yes, madame. No, I've had those wretched clothes removed. Now, if these do not fit or are not to your taste, new clothes will be made. I must have my own clothes back, madame. My dear, if you are to be my personal charge, I must ask for a bit more cooperation. <coughs> What is it you want? Want? Well, I want to go to heaven. My dear, I was a pious young girl who hoped to be a nun, but my family would have none of it. So God had to learn to share me with others, too. And I fear he's not always come first. Now my time is short. Judgment day draws nearer. I must strengthen my defense. If I can keep... If I can keep God's blessed young maid from the hands of the English, perhaps he will grant me Mercy. How will Madame keep me out of the hands of the English? I expect we'll find a way together. Janelle, very interested in understanding you. I would like to discover what's inside of a child who is touched by God. Tell me about your saints. What do their voices sound like? They're kind and gentle. And when they speak, do other people hear them? No, only me. Let me take you in hand. You will be educated. You will be taught manners. You will be introduced into society. And at the same time, you will train with your arms. You will continue to study. Continue to study the art of war. You will not be hemmed in as you were in France. There will be no judgment about your manly interests here. You will not be toyed with by schemers who resent you even as they use you. You'll be completely celebrated for everything that you are. Not in spite of it. But in France, I'm free, and here I'm a prisoner. Well, only until you are ready to be free, until you allow yourself to accept this splendid new life, then I'm sure you will. Because, my dearest girl, you are offered only two choices, you know. Allow Burgundy to embrace you, or England to kill you. Why would Burgundy embrace me? You will lead our army to victory. My dearest lady, all of this has been in the belief that I would fight against soldiers I once led, I will topple a king I once crowned. Why do you care so much for this vile pretender who, who, who used you and then abandoned you? Why? Because only through me can he learn how to be a good king. Is it not possible that God might want the French people united, but not necessarily under France? Can you be sure that that crown belongs to Charles and not to, say, Philip? I assure you, madame, the correct man is wearing the crown. No! He is a fool! He has no right! To be king!
after this. will take you. The church will try you for heresy. If you remember nothing else, you remember these words. Our Lord first served. Say them. Our Lord first served. Turn them over. Study these words. They are your key to survival. Only these words will save you. everything they can to destroy Joan. This will stop. We have no official sanction. Any man captured will face certain death. I cannot pay much, but what I can, no. I will. There will be no pay. If you fight, it is for your belief. Nothing else. Producer accused. Spirits, Joan. They would be better were I in a church prison as I'm entitled. I'm burdened of these shackles which seem excessive in these surroundings. They are for your own protection. How am I protected? I've been denied an advocate and I'm the only witness in my own defense. Unfortunately, you have been charged in English court. Any French witnesses, you might call, would be seized and hanged if they showed themselves at the gates of Rouen. As to your other requests, recognizing that you are untaught and therefore possibly at a disadvantage in front of these learned men, I grant you leave to choose a person from among their number to help you with counsel and advice. 
As you would grant leave of a lamb to ask help from a wolf. I remind the accused and the public of the serious nature of this trial. Are we to glean that you are declining the offer of counsel? You may so glean. Note that in a record. Now kneel and make an oath to answer with exact truthfulness all questions asked of you. No. For I do not know what will be asked of me. You may ask things that I cannot reveal. Swear with your hands upon the Gospels to answer truthfully all questions asked of you. I will gladly answer all things, Bishop. Except the revelations which are meant only for my king. God command you to put on men's clothing. My clothing is a small matter, one of the least. But it was done at our Lord's bidding. Will you wear a woman's dress if we give you one? Send me home to my mother and I will wear anything you like. Bishop, these are not serious questions. Is it not possible? We can dispense with the clothing at this time. Now turn to your voices and visions. When did they begin? And the church has already examined me on this at Poitiers. You know my answers and the church's findings. When did the voices begin? When I was 10. Who spoke to you? St. Catherine and St. Margaret. How did you know? Because they told me. Who else spoke to you? Saint Michael. And did they appear to you? I've told you this before. Tell me again. Yes, they appear. What sort of things do they tell you? They tell me that within seven years' time, a disaster will befall the English. Soon thereafter, England will lose all of France. Silence! When did you last hear your voices? Last night, and again this morning. How often do they come? There's no day that I don't hear them. Do you call them, or do they come without your calling? They've often come without my calling. Other times I need to pray our Lord send them. Do you ever call them and they do not come? If I'm in great need of them, they always come. What things do you ask your voices? Right now, I ask them three things. That my God will continue to help the French. For my freedom. And that my soul will be saved. Then you have been betrayed. For you will certainly either burn as a heretic, or you will spend the rest of your days in prison. That's not. Your voices told you differently. Have your voices told you you will be rescued? What precisely were you told? My council has given me leave to tell you that you are in great danger. What is this great danger? For judging me, you will suffer in body and soul. What sign did you give to your fake king when you first met? I have no fake king. You know what he means. 
What sign did you give Charles? Ask Charles. I'm asking you. I can't tell you. Perhaps in time. We are the court. There is the rack, and there are his ministers. <sighs> you will reveal all now. Or Brother Lameda will extract it from you in his own way. If you tear my limbs, let me speak out of pain. But afterwards, I will deny it all. Why are you punishing me for talking to God? taking so long you have enough evidence to burn ten heretics. The church is unconcerned with the English agenda, only with the salvation of Joan's soul. I've paid a huge price for the witch and I want her dead. If the church lets her go... If the church lets her go, God help any man who lays a finger on her. Brother Cochon has been waging a long, exhaustive, but doomed battle for the girl's soul. You would soon have the outcome you desire. Good. The trial continues in secret. Joan. Joan of Arc. I'm Brother Lemaitre of the Holy Inquisition. I've been presiding these last weeks so that I may assist in identifying the true heretic. You have said that your voices never fail you. Yet, you say they instructed you to wear men's clothing? Yes. Can you explain why our Lord would endanger your life by instructing you to deny your sex? I don't know. But I've often felt on the battlefields and here in this prison, I'm just constantly alone with soldiers. My clothing doesn't endanger my life. Rather, it saves it. Will you submit to the judgment of the church? Voice of God on earth. Yes. So long as our Lord is first served. Joan, stand up. Stand up! For the record, do you, Joan Dark of Don Remy, refuse now and forever to submit to the will of the church militant, the representative of God on earth? Joan! Don't answer hastily. Your words could mean that you will burn. Even if the stake were raised and the fire lit, I would not lose faith in God. God will spare me. Child, the stake is raised. You would burn. Take her outside. Possible. St. Catherine promised. There is nothing to what awaits you. God is not going to release you, and Charles is not going to rescue you. Your fate is in no one's hands but yours. I'm 
finding Cochon. One hour, or we attack. Only a few minutes. John? Joan! Hey, hey! <gasps> it's me. Joan, we've gathered an army. We're just beyond the hill. And tomorrow night, when this town sleeps, we're gonna storm those gates and take this prison. will be here? The king didn't. But Lahir is with us. And so are thousands of soldiers who are willing to die for what they believe in. The maid. There's nothing left of her. Don't say that. I made a pact, Jean. You stayed alive. And killed everything that I believed in. Let's go. Joan, please. Please be ready for us tomorrow. We won't be long. I'm busy, sweet Joan. Adieu. Until tomorrow. Adieu. have you done? What I confessed? I confessed from fear. But every word was a lie. I retract my abjuration now and for all time. You die through your own words. No. Dear Bishop, I die through you. Joan, Dark of Don Remy. Through your wickedness, you are a menace and a peril to the Church's purity and holiness. But the Church can no longer protect you. You will be bound over to secular authorities who will deliver you to the executioner. Go in peace. That I gave the Dauphin. It too was a lie. Why? You asked me to break a vow to God. I saved us both. Recanted. They will execute her at once. Wait here. I'll get the men. We'll charge the main gate. I'll go with you. No, you stay. Let her see you. Give her hope.
We need to attack now! We'll attack the south gate to distract soldiers away from the main gate! Follow me! Crucifix level with my eyes. Be quiet. May I see a crucifix level? 